Confluence is great for writing helpful documentation content, but how do you put it exactly where users need it? Well, you do that by embedding your help content directly into their context in your app. Hi, I'm Matt with K15T, and I'm going to talk to you about the origins of context-sensitive help and how it's evolved into in-app help and how you can get your Confluence content directly into your app where people need it most. I wouldn't blame you if you thought context-sensitive help and in-app help were the same thing. Not exactly. As it turns out, the relationship between in-app help and context-sensitive help can be thought of more like cousins than twins. The idea with context-sensitive help is to enable your users to navigate from specific touch points within your app directly to the corresponding piece of help content in your documentation. And as the name suggests, your help content is provided with context. So, when a user clicks a context-sensitive help link in your app, a new tab is opened in your browser where they can explore the content related to the feature or topic they're exploring in your app. This should enable them to gather all the information related to the context or situation in which they found themselves. And to create a better app experience for your users and to help avoid frustration, you can put context-sensitive help in areas of your software where you know users commonly get stuck. Like in this example, maybe I've never seen Confluence before, and I'm brought to the Confluence-specific section of Atlassian's much, much bigger Help Center, where I can learn more. Context-sensitive help is great because you can link to open help documentation in a new browser so users can read more. You can also create dedicated articles to be used for this specific purpose and then hide them within your help center so your users get a unique reading experience. To level up this whole concept, we have in-app help. Also known as embedded help, in-app help builds on the premise of context-sensitive help, but in a way more sophisticated and awesome way. Let's just say it's the better looking cousin. In-app help takes the plain help button links offered by context-sensitive help and outshines it in just about every way. With in-app help, users can access help documentation related to the topic they want to learn about without needing to leave the context they're working in. The help information they need is presented to them right in place, exactly where they're working. Like, you can't get more in context than that. In-app help is great, not only because you can link out to documentation in your help center and also have those hidden articles, but also you can read help documentation right in the context of your app, embedded within an iframe. You can display components like images and tables within that iframe, and you can have them styled beautifully so they look really, really great and they fit nicely within the looks of your app. And did I mention you can show users just a small segment of your documentation page or the entire thing, depending on what content you think they need most. So, if you're using Confluence to author your help documentation, you have a few different options for how you get that into your app. The first option is by using the Scroll Viewport for Confluence Cloud app. Using Scroll Viewport, you can transform your Confluence Cloud documentation into a really beautiful help center. And you can also use it to pull in that beautiful content using help links like this embedded in your app that open an iframe that displays the same content that's in your help center but right in the context of your app. To set this up, copy the URL from any scroll viewport page and append this to the end. Then grab that entire URL and use that for your embedded iframe within your app. Your users will be able to read your help documentation directly in place, and also your content will look great because the images and the tables and all the other content is just as beautifully formatted here as it is in your help center. Another option you have is using the public links feature in Confluence Cloud. This is a built-in feature in Confluence which generates share links that can be publicly accessible. You could take one of these links and embed it in your app with an iframe similar to how we did it with Scroll Viewport. The upside here is you don't need any additional Confluence Cloud apps. The downside is this is really only meant for sharing individual pages with users, so it's not going to be ideal if you have a large amount of content. Also, you don't have the fine-tuned controls that you have with Scroll Viewport around styling and customization, but it could work really well for your team. 
As a final option, maybe you just want to export your Confluence content into another more familiar format, something like PDF or XML. You can use whatever method for exporting you prefer, whether it's a built-in Confluence Cloud exporter or an app like this one, Scroll PDF Exporter, to export your content. Make sure the tool you're using to export your content keeps the formatting great so your content looks really, really good as your users view it in your app. So context-sensitive help and in-app help are two pretty different ideas. And you have a lot of options for how you want to implement it, depending on what you think your users need. Using this approach, we've seen a really big uptick in the number of users finding solutions without even going to our help center, which we think is really, really cool. But we'd love to hear about your team's experience. How did you implement in-app help? And how is it working for your team? Let us know in the comments below. There are so many other great ways to use Confluence. And at K15T, we're always looking to make it more helpful. So hit that subscribe button, share the video with other team members, and I will see you in another video as we continue to explore using Confluence to share what you do best.